says it's setting up the YouTube live. Uh, I believe it might already be live. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, okay, so welcome everybody to uh, the uh, November capstone presentations for the Chicago cohort, um, where you guys are going to see the final projects that everybody has made in this particular cohort, um, which is a culmination of all the hard work that they've uh, uh, put into learning uh, back end, front end, uh, web development, uh, technologies. Uh, yeah, so I'm very proud of this particular cohort. It's a small group, but uh, mighty. Uh, this was our first in-person cohort in a very long time. So uh, everybody here uh, has attended the Chicago daytime class in our uh, Chicago offices, and uh, we'll be definitely offering more of those in the future. Um, yeah, and you know, it's, it's obviously uh, been a very uh, difficult time for everybody uh, in this uh, particular moment in history. Um, and everybody here did a really great job of, uh, you know, being able to focus and, and make some amazing apps and learn a lot of stuff along the way. Um, so, uh, yeah, before we get started with the presentations, I want to introduce our two panelists, um, which is Jay and Jennifer. Jay, if you want to uh, go ahead and say a few words about yourself. Sure. Thank you, Peter. So I'm Jay Wingro, the uh, CEO of Actualize, and I'm really excited to see the capstones that our students, now grads, uh, have created. As Peter has mentioned, uh, these grads have put in so much work. Uh, it's a very intense course and day in, day out, uh, they just really slog through it and learn a lot of stuff. Um, so anyone who uh, goes through this experience is definitely, uh, by definition, a very special person. So kudos to all the grads, really looking forward to seeing their projects. Um, also just wanted to Give a special shout out to all those involved in making this happen. So Peter, uh, the lead instructor and Dean of Actualize and, and the lead instructor of this cohort, uh, who does so much uh, and in particular, particularly for this cohort, having led it all the way uh, for these entire 12 weeks. So thank you, Peter, for all of that. Thank you to the careers team, Lisa and Sarah, who help guide our students through what we call our job hacking, uh, experience, which helps them uh, prepare for the job market. Um, also want to thank Jennifer, who's also here as a panelist. Um, and that's about it. Looking forward to the presentations. All right. Thanks, Jay. And Jennifer, if you want to say a few words about yourself. Sure. Uh, so I'm Jennifer Lubeko. I um, went through the boot camp um, late 2016 and early 2017. Um, I was a librarian at the time and decided to change careers. And I worked for a company called Interworkings for a few years, um, a few months after I finished up the boot camp. And now I'm at a different company um, working on automated tests um, for um, one of the applications they have there. Um, so yeah, it's been uh, kind of a whirlwind the past few years. Um, so it's been about five years since I started to make the change and um, here I am. And uh, I was also a TA for uh, a few cohorts between um, 2019 and 2020. So both before and during the pandemic. Um, so yeah, here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jennifer's very familiar with our curriculum and she's very familiar with all the hard work that you guys had to put through to, uh, to build these projects, both from a student and as a TA, she's, uh, she's seen all of those things. And so, yeah, um, very excited to have both of you here. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and kick it off to our first presenter, which is Will. So Will, if you want to take over the screen share and unmute your mic, um, and we can go ahead and get started. All right, good. Can you guys hear me all right? All right, so my project is called Busy Board. My idea came from uh, families are generally super busy and uh, most of the time, everybody has just like one place in their house where everything is uh, like calendar list reminders. Uh, usually it's like the front of your fridge or like you have a little cork board or something somewhere where everybody can kind of conglomerate everything going on. And so what my how my app works is you log in and it takes you right to an invitation page where it says like Kathy's birthday Kathy's my mom we're going to Clara's I guess and she has a little wish list going on. I'm going to say I'm attending and check out my profile. When you come to the profile page, I have my group and it's my whole family. Uh, and then I have my events and they're all organized so that they're all visible. But like 
that's kind of what everybody has going on and it's all pretty linear. Um, and then I have my list, which is also pretty linear and you can edit them and all that. Um, but the biggest part of my project has been like this cork board to make it so like it's a front of a fridge and uh, you can adjust the sizes and move them around based off like a hierarchy of priorities or whatever, like Christmas, I don't really care about. So that's gonna get pretty small. I'm going to the art museum with my sister. Like that's pretty cool, but not that big of a deal. Taking my daughter to build a bear for the first time. That's awesome, you know, pretty cool. Dr. Seuss is coming up. They have that exhibit in Chicago. My mom's birthday, I always forget getting her a present. So I'm gonna leave that pretty big. I have a Google calendar attached to it so that uh, you can see events and you can kind of click on them and it'll show you when it is. Um, it'll also take you to Google calendar so you can open up a bigger version of it. Um, I have my chores listed here and some groceries that I gotta get. Um, you can create an event where you say like, hey, I'm doing my capstone presentation. And uh, you put in the date and we'll say it's now at 11.38. Sounds good to me. I'm gonna invite my mom to it and it'll take me to the calendar and I save it and it saves to a shared calendar with everybody in my family, which is, includes my dad who doesn't have the app, but because he has Google and he can have access to the calendar. So whenever events are made, he has them in his calendar as well. You come back to the homepage and look at that. I got a new event. I'll put Thanksgiving over there because whatever, but got capstone, pretty cool. And yeah, that's my project. That's what I've been working on. All right, very cool. Thank you, Will. Um, so I'm gonna pass this over to Jay, our first panelist to uh, ask some questions about the project. Yeah, I love this app, Will. It's really cool. Um, I'm just gonna start diving deep into this cork board. Um, so what technologies have you been using to pull this off? Well, let's start with like the ability to move things around and resize things. What's that running on? Yeah, so it's running on Fabric JS, which is like a built on top of just Canvas, uh, which is a program that's a little more bare bones. But this one, you can create shapes and like you can create uh, squares, circles, triangles. You can draw on it. Actually, it's a really cool software that was really fun to learn. Um, the the biggest thing for this one though that like I had to figure out is whenever I reloaded a page, it would reset all the locations of all the little little pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I had to do is store the geography of the item, which was the location, size, everything about it, the angle it was at. I had to store that. And every time that it moves, it actually gets uh, pushed into the back end and saves the location so that uh, I can, when I reload the page, like it come, well, whoops, but uh, it'll save where it's at. Very cool. So that actually gets saved to the database on the back end. Every time the mouse clicks on it. Wow. And the calendar that's put it, that's also on the cork board, is that, is that yeah. movable or that just fixed? I have it fixed, but uh, it's actually not attached to the cork board. It's actually following the box behind it. So every time the box moved, it would follow the box, but uh, it gets a little finicky when the mouse goes over the calendar. So I left it fixed so that wouldn't have any technical issues. Um, but like when it does move, it will move and save the position as well. Got it. And the pictures that are loading um, on each of these like sticky notes, where did those come from? Uh, they're all stock images. And then I have a setting uh, set up so that like when I create a new event, the smiley face is actually the default. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm planning on building out where you can actually add an image to when you're creating an event and it'll print out the image itself right, right off Got the it. That's so cool. What would you say was the most, I mean, perhaps you already alluded to it, but what's the most challenging uh, part of this project? Um, you know, like... Uh, the hardest part was getting the calendar up on the board. I had the calendar below it the whole time and uh, it was bigger, but I also thought it'd be cool to have the calendar part of it. Um, 
and it that had to just be really like kind of hacked onto it because there was no way for an iframe uh to like be a part of the canvas fabric because these mm -hmm. are uh, each little sticker is considered a fabric on top of the canvas which is the cork board mm -hmm. so like that took a lot of finagling and so how did you pull that off so what you did there was a little code up on fabric js that they had an example of and uh you just had to uh set the offset of the calendar like the location where because you can put the calendar wherever you want you had mm -hmm. to set it to match the box and then like put the box where you want and the calendar will just follow got it interesting so yeah some very clever engineering there um this is a fantastic app will uh, I love it and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Yeah, fantastic job. Looks like something that uh, Jay might need for his very, very large and uh, one family that just got one, one larger. So, um, okay. So let's go ahead and switch this off to the uh, next presenter, which is Alexis. So Alexis, if you want to take over the screen share and uh, unmute your microphone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. So uh, this is my cap zone. So I like listening to music a lot, but I also have this little habit where I'll find a song I really like and uh, I'll listen to it over and over again. And then I run into another problem. Uh, I don't want to listen to it anymore and I need a new recommendation. Right. So I'd usually go to like Spotify recommended. But um, after a while of like searching through that, it's like it's giving you recommendations based off tags, you know, no one's really listening to it. No one with my music taste is giving me recommendations. Like the Spotify recommended could give you like the worst song ever, but it'll still recommend it to you because it has those tags that uh, follow like your listening history. And so I made this capstone so I could find, it's called Put Me On. And so I can find music, music recommendations by following people who have similar music tastes. So I'll take you to like the sign up process right here. I already have this filled out. I'm gonna sign in. And so when a user signs, oh shoot. When a user signs in, if you don't have any favorite songs or any favorite albums in our database, it'll take you to this page. And so this is right here. This is our database of music. And so I can click up. Uh, my favorite songs so i'll click these ones you know i like to say kanye west and some other ones and then i like some of these songs i like faith lucid dreams you know i'll click the ones i like and i'll save them and they'll save it to my profile and so now i get pushed to our home page and our home page you can make recommendations which are the posts and so right now right here we would see our posts from the people we're following but we're not following anyone so we click this and then we'd get a list of people that have their music right here and we can follow them, see if we have a similar music taste. So right here I can look, mm, yeah, I like Circles by Mac Miller and I like Face, I'll follow him. I keep going down. Um, you know, keep going down. I like, Baby Keem, I like Joji, I'll follow him. Uh, I like Frank Ocean, but I have no idea what the current Joys is or who Cage the Elephant is. So maybe I'll follow this person to see maybe if I like the songs that they're recommending. Uh, same thing with this person. And so now if I go back to the homepage, I got recommendations. So these recommendations are just, you know, you can read them and see what it is. Uh, Another thing I forgot to mention, hold on, if I can go back. Um, on this page, if we didn't have a song or an album you didn't like, you can log in with Spotify using OAuth and you can agree and you can search for a, an album or an artist and their albums will pop up. So if I wanna do like The weekend. It'll give me a list of albums from Spotify. I can add the album directly to our database. So now, the person that wants to come in and do the do the, the sign-up process, they'll have they'll see 
these songs right here or these albums right here at the end by the weekend same thing over here with songs i search up the weekend and it'll give me like their three top tracks and if it has audio or it has preview uh preview audio i could listen to it but these ones don't so i can't so i go back here and i'll see these recommendations and so i'll keep looking and see i've never heard buttercup by Jack Stauber, but I want to listen to it, maybe give it a preview. I click on this the Spotify icon and it'll bring up the top three searches for this person or for the song name. And so right here, I can click on it and listen to it. You know, get a quick little, you know, audio cue so I, I can see if I like it. And if I do, I can press this button and like it. Uh, right now, it's a little finicky. Like it won't, if I do it, it has to refresh the whole page and then I have to go back all the way down to see it. But you see, it does like, um, but that, yeah, that's pretty much my capstone. You can also like go to your profile, see your favorite songs, favorite albums and change and stuff. Um, that's pretty much it. Like some other stuff I like to build out would be like tighter integration with Spotify. I'd want to right here under here. You could, if I had a post, you would see the post that I made. And then over here, I want to add something like a list of my liked posts and then have a button on right next to them so I can press it and it'll add it to my like songs playlist on Spotify so I don't have to keep going back and forward back and forward to find the songs and add them to my playlist um and probably also so right here in my posts I probably want to have a button that has like songs artists or albums and then like I'd press that and then when I would make the whole post, I'd be like the album, the person who made it, why I recommend the album. And when I press that icon, instead of just giving me the tracks, it either give me the artist and their projects or the album or, you know, just like the tracks with how it is right now. Um, then I'd probably also want to like include the SoundCloud API, the Apple Music API, just so it's not all limited to Spotify and people who have Spotify, you know. But yeah, pretty much my project that's what i've been working on all right awesome job alexis we'll take it to our next panelist which is jennifer um so awesome project um i've just been thinking about like how i can apply this to my own life because i'm also one of those people who just listens to something on repeat um constantly and then just want something different entirely after a certain uh, amount of days. Um, with uh, this project, what did you enjoy building the most? Uh, I enjoyed building the front end. Like I like seeing the website come to life. I like writing code and seeing it pop up right here. And then I liked using the Spotify OAuth. I liked when I press this icon that it'll actually appear, give me some audio tags. You know, that was like the fun part. It was probably the most fun I had doing the whole project. Yeah. Um, what was the most challenging part you ran into? Challenging? Oh, it was probably all the nested data, like trying to get favorite songs out of the songs play, uh, the songs uh, table and then adding that to the, the users. That was probably the most annoying part because sometimes if like some things were off, it wouldn't display at all. And then I have to go and try to redig and do fix my associations. Yeah. Um, and then what other technologies did you use um, aside from Spotify? Uh, nothing really, just playing UGS and I did a theme. And, okay, yeah. a theme, yeah. Okay, great, yeah, I'm super impressed um, with this, so great job. Thank you. All righty, yeah, awesome job, Alexis. You know, uh, anybody who's done OAuth knows that that, that stuff ain't easy. Um, and what I learned from uh, watching Alexis build this app is that, uh, Man, I recognize some of these artists, but looking through Alexis's tasty music makes me feel, oh, I don't recognize Young Thug and Old Thug, and I don't, I don't know these people, so I don't know. Um, but I guess that means that I have a lot of music to discover. So I guess, uh, you know, I'll sign up for the app once it's live. Um, okay, let's take it to our next presenter, which is Christian. So Christian, if you want to take over the screen share, um, and we'll kick it off. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, yeah. Okay. So thanks, Alexis. That was a super cool app you made there. I uh, even want to use it myself. So uh, yeah, hopefully that can be made available. Um, so 
like everybody else here, um, since starting my coding journey, um, I've pretty much been Googling how to do things and resolve error messages um, pretty much nonstop, right? Um, and for me, one of the most frustrating aspects of this whole process has been having to sift through what feels like um, an endless amount of what I would describe as absolutely awful programming tutorials. Um, for me, I've never had any success with Stack Overflow, and I think that there are too many uh, uh, programming tutorials out there that are either too vague um, and don't provide enough specifics with example code, or they require um, what I feel like is a um, pre-existing nuanced um, understanding of what the, the tutorial itself should be um, showing the user, right? Um, so what good tutorials I do find, um, bookmarking them in a browser can be messy um, and inefficient. So I figured, hey, why not make an app that lets users uh, upload, share, um, and rate what good tutorials they do find using an open source approach. So um, taking a look at my uh, app here, hopefully everybody can see this. Um, yeah, this is the homepage. So let's say I'm a new user. I've just logged in, I've signed up and logged in. And uh, here's the homepage. It's uh, pretty pretty bare, I guess. Uh, got an about us. That's uh, that's fine and with a brief description, kind of cringe. Whoever wrote this should be fired, but whatever. Let's uh, dig into the actual meat here. Um, if I click on tutorials, looks like it takes me to where it actually loads a index page. View all tutorials and the respective ratings. Cool, let's take a look. So slowly but surely, everything populates. Um, we got a search function here. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, let's say I wanted to actually click on one of the tutorials and see what, uh, what happens. So I'll click go to tutorial for this Vue.js. Um, that's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, hopefully the hyperlink works. Looks like it does, so that's fine. Um, I go through it. Um, I think it's an okay tutorial, and now I want to rate it as a user, right? Um, looks like it's already got a rating here. Somebody gave it uh, user experience, which um, I define as the, uh, the the layout and the formatting of the tutorial. So essentially, what it looks like and how easy it is to follow along. Um, they gave that a two, and they gave the content rating a four. So and they gave it an all right description. That's 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 fine. Um, let's say I want to rate it myself now. Um, I really liked the way the uh, the tutorial looked, so I'm gonna give it a four. And uh, I thought it was perfect for what I wanted to learn. So um, I'll give it a description. Awesome. Create rating. And since I'm logged in, it shows up. So cool. Um, if I go back to the uh, the tutorials index, and everything loads. Uh, there we go. You'll see that the average rating for each one um, does show up based on uh, what ratings have been made. So that's cool. Um, now let's say I, as a user, I'm thinking to myself, whoever made this is an absolute hack. They don't know what they're doing. I can do a better job. So um, I'm going to go find a tutorial that uh, shows me how to make my own app, and then I'll upload it here just to uh, add insult to injury, I guess, right? So uh, let's see. Um, how about this one? Beginner's Guide to Web Application Development. Uh, this should do. I'll just copy the URL here and I'll go to New Tutorial where I can make a new one, hopefully. Cool. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just copy and paste the URL here. Uh, select the topics, uh, web development, sure and web design, because why not? Using uh, well, Vue.js, so we'll say JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So submit. And it'll take me back to the index page. And hopefully, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, cool, it does show up. Um, so basically, um, as I hop out of the role of the user real quick, um, if you'll notice, all I did was provide the URL. Um, I have a gem file installed uh, called link thumbnailer. 
which basically it functions almost like a web scraper where um, if you provide a URL like we did here, um, it will spit back um, the title of the web page as well as a, uh, a summary page or a summary of the web page. Um, so that's cool. Um, and I guess if I wanted to write this one as well, I could. Um, and because I uploaded it as a user, I'm going to give it a perfect score and um, it will be reflected there as well. Yeah, so it shows up. Five out of five. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's what I got right now. Um, as far as uh, features that I was working on or um, want to implement, there are quite a few. Um, from the get-go, I always wanted to have a uh, request feature that would let users um, request uh, a, a tutorial based on um, specified parameters. So um, other users could see that request and uh, do their own digging. And once they found something that they were looking for, um, they could post that tutorial as well and everybody else could rate it. Um, I also wanted a, uh, a comments section for each uh, tutorial as well, so uh, people could talk, uh, as well as a forum feature. So um, users could directly chat with one another um, and post outside the comments uh, sections. So um, quite a few things I still want to do and probably will. Um, but yeah, the entire idea again is um, to build a community around people who have a good eye for quality programming tutorials. So. Uh, essentially, they'll as they get more experience, um, they'll go on to write and create their own programming tutorials um, and eventually replace the plethora of garbage ones that are out there by newer, better ones that they write. So, um, yeah, that's what I got. All right. Very cool. Thank you, Christian. We'll take it over to our next panelist, which is Jay. This is such a cool app, Christian, um, and obviously very useful. Which there's a lot of different features here that I really like. Um, I like how dynamic everything is in particular, like how as soon as you create a rating, it automatically pops up like that. I love the, you know, how you, when you like hover over the stars, um, it automatically lights up. Just on that small point, was that easy? How did you pull that off that, the, the, that it automatically, uh, the stars light up when you hover over that? Yeah, that was another gem file. Um... I don't think I have it open right now, but I could find it. I think it was just called like uh, uh, View Star or something like that. But Peter, do mm -hmm. you remember? Uh, I, I don't, uh, but it was another gem file. Yeah, it was, a, it was a view component, I believe, called View Star. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So. Got it. Yeah. It's a really nice touch. Which, which feature of all would you say you're the most proud of? Um, the fact that when you look at the tutorials index, um, everything populates by itself using the web scraper um, gem file that I mentioned earlier, gem. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's pretty cool. I uh, had to ask quite a bit of Peter's time to uh, get that to work. So yeah, that's what I would say. Was the documentation for that gem, uh, did it leave up to be desired or? No, I thought it was pretty straightforward. The issue really was um, getting, uh, what we had to install to integrate with my code that I already had. Um, mm -hmm. Got that it. always presents some changes or some uh, challenges. Got it. Um, cool. Is there anything, if you had to build this project again, uh, is there anything you might do differently the second time around? Oh yeah, uh, for sure. I was, I personally struggled a lot um, using Vue.js. So I was a lot more comfortable um, using the back end side of things as opposed to the front end. Mm -hmm. um, really, um, I think I probably did most of my work for this capstone, um, uh, this week, <laughs> week, uh, the second week. Um, so if I could go back, um, I would take more time to learn how to use, um, Vue.js on my own and be more proficient with it. That way I could, um, do a better job really of managing my time, um, and actually knowing what to do instead of always having to run to Peter or whoever was, uh, was available to uh, ask for their help. So um, and on that note of time management, um, after Peter put me on, uh, he, he made me use, uh, the, what's it called, GitHub's, uh, these little card things, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? GitHub projects, like a project. Projects, there we go, yeah. Um, that really did help because um, 
I could list out exactly what I still needed to do and what I might need help with. And then if, if and when I needed help, I could go to somebody and show them, hey, this is what um, I need help with. And they'll know exactly you know, what to do instead of me struggling um, to explain uh, you know, what I need help with. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'd say. Yeah, that's a really good learning experience. And uh, I guess wise words to any future students <laughs> watching this yeah. uh, presentation. Uh, but you pulled it off really, really nicely, Christian. It's a really impressive project. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, awesome job, Christian. Um, yeah, the only thing I would say is that, uh, you know, I've, I've written some coding tutorials uh, myself, and I'm going through the list that uh, Christian has there, and I don't see any of mine in there. It was, like, it was a little hurtful, but, uh, you know, uh, hopefully when the app goes live, I'm just going to do the same thing Christian did. And I'm going to upload all of my own tutorials and give them all fives, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I can keep that perfect streak. Um, all righty, let's take it over to our next presenter, which is Dave. Hello. Hi, uh, let me get Zoom out of the way, hang on. Okay, so um, this is my project, uh, Playgroup Tutor. Um, this is all about the card game Magic the Gathering. Um, I made it basically as a way for people like me to connect with other Magic players. Um, but if you're a little lost already, I uh, don't blame you. Um, I've got a little page for what is Magic the Gathering. So um, essentially it is a card game where you collect which cards you want to play with. You make a deck out of those cards and you play with each other. Um, how that relates to my site is that I'm looking for people who play the same way as me. Uh, they're what's called formats. Um, think of like a regular deck of 52 cards that poker or hearts or Texas Hold'em, those would be separate formats. So before you even sit down and say, hey, let's play cards, you say, hey, let's play poker. Um, so they know exactly what to do. They know the rules. Every format has different rules and what uh, you can play with and uh, what you can't. So people who play different formats, most of the time cannot play with each other. So they've got to have the deck of that format. So I've got a little way for a tutorial of how to play Magic and what all these formats are, brings you to an external link um, on the official Magic website. Um, here's just some facts that there's over 20,000 unique cards and they're constantly adding more. About three and a half million players with 65 different formats. It's, it's pretty massive. Um, so I want all that to make sense for the people who just want to sit down and play. Um, uh, this is my little about page. Um, so if you're uh, just to go over the context of this site, um, why it's called Playgroup Tutor. A playgroup is just a bunch of friends that get together and play often. And a tutor is a nickname in Magic for a card that lets you search through your, uh, through your deck. So um, basically just searching for friends or for uh, a play group. Um, I myself had a play group um, for a couple of years. We would meet weekly and play the game. Um, but people, you know, grew up, went to college or got married, moved away. And so we kind of scattered. Um, so this is a way for people like me to meet new friends form new play groups and uh, get together. I've, I've made a little heat map of uh, the users on my site. You can see a uh, majority are in central Illinois. There's some in Ohio. Um, over here in Chicago, there's me somewhere. Um, you can look out all over the US and uh, there's some in Vegas, LA and Reno. So yeah, this is just a rough estimate. You can look at a glance of where all my users are on my website. Um, but let's go back and create an account uh, to join this website. So I click create and that brings me to this page. Um, nothing new here, just email, password, um, 
full name, zip code, very important. This is gonna be the way um, you find each other based on their distance. So um, I didn't wanna make it super specific like your address, but this gives you a rough estimate of how many people are nearby you. Um, we got a little bit about yourself that you can type in and your favorite formats, so the ways you play magic. So I'm gonna just click some of these and um, I can try and sign up, but anything I didn't fill out right is gonna give me a little error. So um, yeah, the other big part of this is the profile picture. I didn't want everyone to um, upload their own picture or have themselves, you know, it's not like Facebook or anything like that. I wanted it to be all magic themed. So you can choose your favorite color in magic. This is just um, different types of cards, um, different guilds, or you can search for your favorite card. Uh, this is gonna use the um, uh, API called Scryfall. And so I'm going to search for, let's say, uh, dragon. That's gonna pull up um, every single dragon that they've populated along with their art for my profile picture. Um, some of these, uh, have had different arts in the past uh, as they've been reprinted. So I can search up lightning bolt um, and choose which printing. And you can see some of these are the same. Some of these are vastly different, different artists that you can pull up and choose your favorite one. Uh, and that'll update for when you create your profile. Um, but I've already made an account, so I'm going to log in right now. And that brings me to the main page. So this is basically your find friends. Um, I'm showing all users within 15 miles filtered by all formats. And you can see underneath their picture of which formats they play, blah, blah, blah. And you can click on them to see a little bit about themselves how far they are, their age. You know, if you're middle age, you don't want to connect with kids. That's understandable. Um, and you can look through all those users. Um, you can increase or decrease the radius if you don't want to travel far. Hey, I only want to go seven miles. I can see Bo is the closest near me. Um, but if I can go up to like a hundred or any any amount if I want, or just click any distance. Now I'm seeing every single person. Uh, in the site. Why I mentioned that um, favorite formats um, is because of this uh, feature, the uh, filters. If I only want to play, um, let's say, standard, I'm only going to see people who at least play standard. Um, so I can figure out exactly who I want uh, to connect with. Um, but for now, let's go back to my profile. This is all my information, very similar to the create an account. And I've got it set up um, pretty dynamically. So if I wanna change my email, I can just do that and have it updated right away. Um, anytime I update these, that's updated on my backend. So I'm going to say, hey, I only like popper. Um, once again, I can, I can change my picture. I can even click a random card. And if I don't even know what that card is, uh, this will take me to another page that tells me everything there is to know about that card. Um, now, since I've only selected Popper, I'm gonna go back to the Find Friends. And you might've noticed something a little different. These are all weighted. So people who only play Popper are um, first up. So it's basically weighted in a way for you know, how the computer will think you'll connect. So if you don't play Popper, you'll, you'll be further down on the line. Um, or if I can just want to strictly filter for Popper, now it's really only showing me people who at least play Popper. So um, yeah, it's a way for you to um, find people who you actually likely connect with. Um, I can click on Ben and I see hey, Ben looks cool. Hey, I play EDH. Um, so cool. Yeah, all friend requests Ben. That gives me a little notification. Um, but I've already got friends and I've got some friend requests. So I'm going to check those out. 
Um, here are the list of all my friends that I've connected with. I can um, block or ignore them if I want, but I'm gonna look at my friend requests and see um, Patricia. Uh, she needs a fourth member. Um, sure, why not? Uh, Jonathan, he's 160 miles away. I'm not really gonna drive that far. So I'm going to just uh, ignore that request. Um, Tristan, I don't like filling out these forms. Yeah, okay, well, I'm gonna block you. So he's not gonna show up at all anymore in my searches or I and his. Um, oh, and here's Ben. So I'm going to accept his request since he sent me one. And you can see that uh, my new friends are in here. Um, and uh, the last feature is the chat. So down here, I've got my chat and I can uh, click a friend and it'll pop up what they've said and I can respond to them just like that. Um, I've already sent a message with uh, Jack. So this is an example uh, conversation where I've said, hey, how's it going? Have you ever tried Cube? No, but I'm willing to. And hey, I've got this uh, game store near me called Hot Sauce Games. I'm gonna be there Friday. He says, okay, sure, I'll see you then. Um, some of these people I know in, in real life. So like Merlin, I'm, I know is really not Merlin. Um, he's just a guy sent up, but um, he's kind of annoying. So I'm gonna block him too. I'm gonna get out of this chat, block Merlin and he's gone. Um, so yeah, that's the meat of, of the site is, is going, finding friends that play the same way as you, um, updating if you want to, which way you play the game and finding new uh, people to, to connect with. All right, very cool, David, very cool. Let's take it off to our next panelist, which is Jennifer. Sorry, uh, Jen, uh, I think you're still muted. Sorry, I wasn't able to unmute for a second. I think just um, Zoom was freezing. Um, no great. Um, so yeah, awesome, uh, awesome project. That looks really cool. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, not uh, myself. I'm not really familiar with Magic of the Gathering, so I got a nice lesson there. Um, mm -hmm. With your project, David, um, why? Like, what inspired you to 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 start this? Like, what? Um, I, you know, I assume you're a fan, but like what inspired um, the different features you chose and um, how you put things together? Um, yeah, I guess it, it was all born out of that, our, our friend group kind of splitting apart. Um, mm -hmm. The way you kind of meet Magic players now is just go to a store okay. um, when they're hosting an event and then just kind of chit chat there. But if you're like me, I rarely go to stores. Most of the time, we're just playing at our house in the kitchen table. So it's, yeah, it was for people, I was just thinking of like a way for people like me to, to connect. Great. Um, and then tell me more about the, um, the API that you used for the, um, the user profiles. Um, I, I'm sorry, I can't recall yeah. the name. Um, uh, it's called Scryfall. That's just the name okay. of, of their website. Um, okay. Yeah, so I, I send requests to get all their pictures um, that comes back with all the data of that information so I can pull in the name and the artist. Um, and yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun getting that working uh, for, for, for the site. And that was kind of, I think, pretty important because I wanted to make it magic themed. If it didn't have the art from magic, it would, it would just be like a list of names or list of people and their profile pictures. I think it was like, it was like kind of weird. Um, I wanted it to be all magic themed, all like, you know, semi anonymous, just first names, not mm -hmm. too specific information. Sure. Um, with your project um, being um, in the state it is now, what would you have done differently um, had you known when you were first getting started? Um, I would have planned out the front end a bit more um, like physically drawn, which, how I want the pages to look like first, um, figured out which 
uh, components I want, um, like this this chat component. Um, I had to like set all this this drop up and the fade and all that stuff. But this chat um, was my second option for a chat. The other one was a supremely complex one that I couldn't follow. I, I took a few days and I got it sort of working. And then I just scrapped it in favor of this one, um, which I feel like in a way is better because I can go on different pages and still have my chats open. Okay. Yeah, great so, yeah, to know. Just be, just be yeah. more planning with the, with the front end. I, I didn't realize how much time it would be front end. I thought it would be like 50-50, but really it's it was the majority it was just tinkering with how I want the page to look. Gotcha. Well, again, awesome. Um, very impressive and uh, good job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, very, very impressive app. I love uh, how much information and how much uh, stuff you're able to put in here. Uh, I actually did play Magic the Gathering and I uh, haven't played it in a while. So maybe I'm going to get back into it. But when I was into Magic, it was like maybe mid to late 90s. When you said there's 64 formats, I'm like, I remember two. So I would have uh, quite a bit of catching up to do. Um, but yeah, great, great job, David. Um, all right, let's take it off to our next presenter, which is Kyle. So Kyle, if you want to take over the screen share and unmute your uh, Zoom mic. All right, can you all hear me? Okay, awesome. All right, so good morning, everyone. For those of you that don't know, my name is Kyle, uh, and I wanted to start my capstone presentation by giving you a little bit of background information about myself to help you understand why I built the app that I'm about to walk you through. So something about me, I love college football. In fact, my whole family does. We love it so much that every year we attend a college football game on campus specifically at a school that we've never visited before. In the past, we've been to Georgia, Penn State, Iowa, LSU, and Wisconsin, to name just a few. We really enjoy exploring the town by walking around campus, checking out local restaurants, and attending the game itself. But my favorite thing to do is go to a tailgate. For me, Tailgating is a really fun way to meet new people who appreciate a lot of the same things that I do and learn more about their respective school, team, and town. I love finding out why they root for the team that they do or the traditions that are unique to their stadium or campus or the best restaurant in town that you could never find on the internet. But finding a tailgate when you're going to a game and you don't know someone personally who attended that school or lived in that town can be kind of tough. In the past, I would randomly email strangers associated with the game that we were going to, usually finding them through some online community or message board or forum. And I would ask them if they had a tailgate or knew somebody who did, and if it would be okay if we tagged along. And as you can probably imagine, the responses I got really varied. Uh, every once in a while, I would get lucky and I would find someone that was super accommodating and was happy to host us, but far more common was struggling to find someone that was comfortable with having a group of strangers hang around with their family and friends. So kind of understandable. Um, but to bridge this disconnect, I built this app that you're looking at called Tailgate Hero that helps people who are attending games and looking for tailgates connect with hosts. And once connected, provides other tools to plan, navigate, and enhance the overall game day experience. So I am actually already logged in. I am myself, and up in the top right-hand corner here, you can see my username, which is Kyle Dude. Um, can also sign up here if I wasn't already signed up, log in, log out, and we'll get to this in a, in a minute. So uh, I've been talking with my family recently, and we think we have an idea of where we want to go for a game this year. We're, we're thinking about Alabama. We've never been there, um, but I'm new to this app and I can kind of see that we've got this map and it looks like those are probably tailgates or games or something like that. So I don't want to, I don't want to cut myself off and I, I kind of just want to explore a little bit. So um, I've never been to a game in Tennessee. So I'm going to hop over here and click on this 
And I can see a little picture. It looks like this is maybe the name of the tailgate and uh, the two teams that are playing. So let's check out this tailgate real quick. And okay, we got the name, which is a little weird. Georgia is going to hurt us. So let's get drunk. Um, okay, we got a big picture. And now I can see some specific tailgate information, some game information and a description. We're going to lose badly, so let's do all we can to numb the pain, okay? This is probably a little bit dark for my family. Um, they've got some amenities, but uh, uh, I, I don't think this is one for us. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go back to the map over here. So let's, let's see what else we got. Um, we've never really been to the West Coast for a game. It looks like there's one going on up here in Oregon. It's probably for the University of Oregon. And yes, it is. They're playing the Washington State Cougars. So let's, let's take a look at this one. Okay, keeping our playoff hopes alive. We got the game. I can see who's hosting this tailgate. Got a nice picture. This one, this one looks pretty rowdy. And uh, some more information here. And then description again. And reading through it. Yes, this is kind of weird. It says that they're family friendly, but there's no kids under the age of 18. That's that's that seems a little off. I don't, I don't know if I would trust this person. So yeah, let's get out of here. Um, it's back to the map. You know what? Uh, I, I think, I think we're definitely going to, to go the Alabama route. Um, I can, I can go down here and see my tailgates all right here. It's some pictures and some information, but just to make things quicker, since I, I know what I'm doing now, I'm going to search Alabama in my search bar and Okay, cool. There's actually three games, or I'm sorry, three tailgates here for the same game. So this, this could be a good opportunity, um, but how will I decide which one I actually want to attend? So I guess we can take a look at these different ones and uh, let's start here, I guess. So this one's Can I Get a Roll Tide? We know the game that's at. Okay, that looks cool. There uh, looks like they're maybe on the quad there. That's pretty nice. We've got some more information. Okay, I'm reading through the description. Very serious about being family friendly. That's cool. That's not really our vibe. And you know, the amenities are kind of lacking for for what we uh, we would usually want. We usually want a TV and some stuff like that. But there there are some people attending this tailgate, so that's that's a good sign. But I'm going to take a look at the at the next one. Okay, here we got party of the century, same thing. Okay, they've got a pretty cool setup. They got some TVs going on. Okay, we are here to drink and get drunk. If you're not ready to do a keg stand at 10 a.m., then we want nothing to do with you. Okay, that's pretty aggressive. Um, probably a bit too aggressive for our family. So let's let's look at this third one and, and see if maybe that's more our speed. So we got tailgate fun on the quad. Wow, that one looks impressive and 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 pretty crazy but sometimes that can be fun so here we've got a, a really nice description it looks like um oh man they have the, a private bathroom that's a huge deal um they're also providing food and drinks oh man this one looks awesome lots of good amenities and i can additionally see some some game stats here uh, we got the records for both teams we've got a uh, matchup win since 1980 and the last time they played what the outcome was. So this might not be the best game, but this looks like a great tailgate. And it looks like um, we've already got a bunch of people who agree with me and think that this is going to be a great tailgate. So I'm going to join this one. And when I do, I, I get this modal and it's uh, asked me to enter my, enter my lodging and parking information so that we can generate some maps that will enhance your game day experience. So I've actually... Um, I've actually already been doing a little bit of, uh, of research because uh, I have a friend who had been to uh, an Alabama game before, and he said that he stayed at a, a great hotel that was like really, really close to uh, downtown, which is where we want to be as well. So I'm going to input that information that he sent over to me. And then I also did some, uh, some of my own research for some parking that's looked like it was in a good spot. And I'm going to, I'm going to add those things and save my changes here. And once I do that, that gets added to my tailgates attending. And this is showing all of the tailgates that I'm going to be attending for games in the future. And uh, once I click this button, we're going to be able to see 
all of uh, what I've been calling our essential locations. We have our lodging, our parking, the stadium, and the tailgate. And uh, I've looked at Tuscaloosa a little bit before, but I think my friend is kind of lying to me. This is nowhere near downtown. Downtown's around here, and he's across the river in Northport. Like, where where did where was he staying that he thought that that was a a good spot to stay at. Like, I want to be in the action. I want to be around the stadium, around the tailgate, all that kind of stuff. You know, not too close, but but in a better spot. So I can actually come down here and I can update my lodging. And I, I think I'm pretty happy with my parking. So I'm just going to do a little bit more quick research and find something that's a bit closer. And it looks like this is a good option for, for what I'm looking for. And we're gonna save those changes and we're gonna generate our game day map again. And that looks much better. We're now on the correct side of the river. These times will be a little bit different because on day, game day, there's some more traffic, but we got a 10 minute drive right now. That looks great. Parking's not too far from the tailgate or the stadium. So I'm really happy with this setup. And now if I was actually there on game day, this is kind of how I would start my, I would have my lodging going to my parking and say I wake up in the morning and I'm, and I'm starving. I can uh, click on the show restaurants and it actually pops me up a, a bunch of restaurants and I can kind of visually see, hey, this, this one looks like it's directly on my route. What's, what's up with this place? So I can see that it's called the Waysider. It's a breakfast spot and it has some history to it. This could be like a really cool place to stop at. So maybe I choose to go to the Waysider. And then once I'm done with my breakfast, I can get navigation to my parking. So there we go. I'm at my parking now. That's all good. Um, so now I'm basically on campus and what's why don't we look at some campus attractions, some cool stuff that we can see while we're walking around. So once again, I got my parking here, my tailgate here. I'm going to change this to walking now. And it looks like I might be able to find out what this is right here. This campus attraction is the Bear Bryant Museum. That's That could be kind of cool to see. Here we got uh, the President's Mansion. That's pretty cool. Uh, maybe maybe we'll make a stop at the president's mansion. And then once we get there, we can head right over to our tailgate. It's a three minute walk, super close. That's awesome. Um, we're hanging out at the tailgate. We're having a great time. And then finally, it's time to go to the game. So draw another navigation, which is pretty simple. And then go to the game. It's a great time. Our team, uh, our team wins. Everybody's happy, all of the above. And maybe, maybe we're not done yet. Maybe we wanna go and have a drink or something like that. I can take a look at that and I can see what's going on over here. Looks like this place is called Galette's. Okay, that's cool, but I don't really wanna walk in that direction. I wanna kind of walk back towards my parking. Oh, awesome, this is a brewery. My family loves this. We, that's, that's perfect for us. We're gonna go there and have a drink. So then we, uh, we have our drink, we go back to our parking, we get our car. And then finally we can, ooh, and then finally we can head back to our lodging and uh, generate that route with our car. So I, I had a great experience at, uh, at this tailgate. I had a ton of fun, so much so that it's a couple of weeks later and I want to return the favor uh, to these wonderful people that showed me such great hospitality uh, down in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So I decide that I'm going to host a tailgate. So I can click on my games up here, and this uh, is going to show me a few things. It's going to show me the uh, current college football playoff top 25, which I'm actually pulling from a college football database API. I have uh, upcoming games. This is by time uh, to now. So you can see some of these games are actually happening tonight. We've got some, uh, we've got some tailgates already in store for these, and I'm actually pulling all of this uh, stuff directly from the SeatGeek API. And then over here, we have some NCAA football stories to keep us in the loop about what's happening with different teams and things like that. And I'm pulling this from a news API. So I've decided I want to host a, a, a tailgate for my friends that I just made. And uh, I want it to be for a good game and I want it to be kind of near me. So I live in Chicago. Ohio State's not that far. They're ranked number four. 
Michigan's not that far. They're ranked number six. I've, I've never been to Michigan, so I kind of want to see what their upcoming schedule looks like. We can search Michigan Wolverines. We get updated stories about the Michigan Wolverines football team over here. And I can take a look at the games that's coming on. This one's at Penn State. This one's at Maryland. Okay, so this one's actually at Michigan. And, oh, man, it's against it's against Ohio State. So that's that's four versus six. That's going to be a massive game. So th- this makes perfect sense. Uh, this would be the perfect game for me to, to host my first tailgate. So I click on create new tailgate. And uh, I've been thinking about this for a little while, too. Just had to find the right game so I can input my uh, my information here. I've got a nice uh, description, thanking my uh, my friends for such a good time that we had. I don't know what happened to my image URL. Okay, that's that appears to be fine. We got to put an address in there so everybody knows where the tailgate's going to be at, and we'll add our uh, our time. So we got a nice little little calendar box here. Uh, to display the date and the time, that's AM, and the end time, which will be, let's say 11, because we don't want to miss the game. That's uh, where we're going in the first place. So there, and I want to have some nice amenities. You know, I'm going to definitely provide the alcohol like they did, food, uh, be relatively family friendly. We'll we'll definitely have some TVs there. So I can create that. And there's my tailgate, Kyle, dude. That's the one I'm hosting. And I'll send a uh, notification out to all of my buddies who I just met in Alabama. And they'll be able to join the tailgate. And we'll have a great time at that game. So, yeah, that's about it. All right. Awesome job, Kyle. We'll take it to our next panelist, which is Jay, who is an expert at college football, from what I understand. <laughs> Um, Kyle, I love how passionate you are about this, and I love how fully featured your app is. Um, there's so many features from the, the Mapbox wizardry and the pulling from the APIs, and what was the most complex uh, aspect of this project? Um, the Mapbox stuff, there, there was definitely some, some difficulty in that. I, I should say that uh, for this version 1.0, when I am... I am generating the map and that works for everything, but for these uh, little bars and restaurants, that's all hard coded right now. I would like in the future, like a version 2.0 to actually allow the um, host of the tailgate to maybe make some suggestions for bars and restaurants that they like in the the town that uh, they go to games in. And then that stuff can be included um, with these like stadium and lodging and tailgate and parking. So it's, it actually works and it's unique for every game and tailgate. Um, but beyond that, the other thing that was challenging was using, uh, the SeatGeek API, uh, this, it, it's very, it's very, uh, finicky about how you search for stuff. You have to include the, uh, team name and the mascot, and then it has to be formatted a certain way, which I'm doing all on the, the back end for the most part, so that you don't actually see it here in the user experience on the front end. Got it. Um, and the other APIs on the left and right, those were simpler. Yeah, this one is, uh, it's called College Football Database. This is literally making a request, a get request to a, one of their path, paths called rankings. And then I'm just selecting the one that I like. Once again, in version 2.0, I'd like to probably make these all links that would take you to this specific team's games coming up or something like that. And then on the right over here, we have a news API that uh, since I put in Alabama Crimson Tide, we're actually getting stories about uh, the Alabama football team. Some of them have pictures, some of them don't. But yeah, so that stuff uh, auto updates depending on what team you're searching for as well. Got it. Really cool. Um, What would you say surprised you most uh about working on this project did anything surprise Um, you something you thought would go one way and it went a different way i i uh i don't like styling things (laughs) uh like i thought i would enjoy it a lot more than i actually did 
but it just felt really, really time consuming and tedious more than anything. And I think you could get really good at it and, and make it look beautiful and have all this great um, UI stuff for your users. But at the level that I'm at right now, it just felt it just felt really difficult to make anything look nice and, and act the way that you want it to. I say, but it looks pretty good. Thank you. Um, I mean, the, the map box, the beautiful map, definitely. Uh, yeah, that was, that was the star of the show. And uh, uh, I wanted to go crazy with more stuff and things like that. And I can thank Peter for m- cutting me off at some point and saying, hey, Kyle, you have to stop working on the maps. Go add some other features. And, and, and I think that ended up making the, the project way more uh, well-rounded in the end. Got it. Uh, well, I love it. Um, again, there's so many features and it's really impressive how you pulled this off. Uh, congratulations, Kyle. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, awesome job, Kyle. Yeah, just uh, as uh, as Jay said, a lot of a lot of great features here. Um, and I myself am not a big college football fan, but I think uh, I was a person who loves to travel. I think it's a really cool thing where you just like, hey, you're getting these recommendations. There's places to go, and it's just a fun way to to see new places. So I think it's almost like has a life beyond just uh, college football. But maybe maybe I guess the thing is, I just need to get into college football more. Otherwise, yeah, come on, Peter, I'll take you to a game. <laughs> I'm gonna sign up for that first tailgate. <laughs> um, all right, let's take it over to our next presenter, which is Percy. So Percy, if you want to take over the screen share. All right, good afternoon. Hopefully everyone can hear me. So the application that I created is called Better Than Yesterday Fitness. Uh, something that I enjoy doing and have a strong passion for is lifting weights. Uh, I do it almost every day or quite a few times a week and I do it with my wife. So it's a, it's a good uh, quality bonding time for us. And every time we're going to the gym, or I shouldn't say every time, but every week we're going to the gym, we run into one of my uh, neighbors, Tim, who sees us. And it's pretty obvious we're going to the gym and he always makes a comment about how he wishes he could get into the gym, but he just doesn't know what he's doing, which is understandably so because there's so many different things you can do while going to the gym. So I built this application with Tim in mind. So when Tim comes to my website, this is the homepage that he'll see. Uh, it's got the name and he can click about the app, which is going to tell him a little bit more about it. So My app was created with the intention of guiding beginners in weightlifting on how to design a workout routine while taking out much of the thought process. So I'm going to explain how it takes that thought process out. Um, So what Tim would do is he would either sign up or log in at the top of the page, and then he'll go to that generate workout page to begin the process there. Uh, At that page, I'll explain more, but down below is a index, which is just a database I created on my own to add a whole bunch of different lifts. Uh, I want to say there's about 180 different lifts in here, and that's just lifts that I put in there. There's many more variations, different names. It could be very confusing. So this is case in point why people get so overwhelmed or just have no clue where to start at and what to do. So I wanted to take that ambiguity out and the questions and create something for them. Uh, Each one of these cards just kind of has the name and it can tell you some more info, which is just a general knowledge point. Uh, It's got a description and video, but not really necessary. Um, Now, when Tim logs in, it's going to take him to his profile. uh, And on his profile page, it's going to have a workout progress calendar. Uh, This was originally something I anticipated using a third-party API for. um, But after a little bit of searching, I came across Vue has its own calendar. So that's what I incorporated right here. Now, each one of the green dots are going to be days that Tim did a workout on. So you can see he's been pretty consistent going to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, the following week, he seemed to miss Friday for a reason, but he got in on there Saturday. So that's pretty good and so forth. Um, and then when he logs in, the day that we're currently on will have a red dot as long as a workout hasn't been completed. So this calendar is a good uh, visual notification. It's, you know, make sure you're keeping yourself on track. Uh, And then down below, you're going to have all these little trophy cards, which will actually have each individual workout that was created for you, where you could see, you know, the summary of that workout, um, which I'll get into a little bit more. But the main reason this application was created is for this page right here. This is the page that is going to take out 
all the questions, all the thought process, and make it very simple for Tim as a beginner or any other beginner to go to the gym. So on the right-hand side over here, you're going to have what I call my seven primary muscles. Of course, you could break it down more, but that really doesn't matter when you're a beginner. So you have your chest, your legs, biceps, triceps, shoulders, back, and core. Now, Tim, uh, maybe he's getting ready for beach season and wants to do some chest lifts. Uh, the user, Tim, can customize this to be the amount of lifts that they want to do or have time for. So whether you have time to go in the gym for 30 minutes, you can customize it for that, or an hour, hour and a half. That all depends on the user, but they'll get to learn. So once I have those three chest exercises, I can hit this add to workout button, let you know it's been added to the workout, uh, very similar to adding anything to a shopping cart. And you know, Tim's happy about the three chest exercises, but he also wants to have some bigger biceps. So he's gonna do two uh, bicep workouts, bicep lifts. Now, once all that's done, you click this green button down at the bottom that says time to work out. And that is what's going to randomly generate this workout based off of those preferences that the user input. So pops up with three chest exercises, it's got the name, barbell incline press, uh, you got a straight arm dumbbell pullover, uh, so forth, and then you got two biceps. Um, sometimes you may get a duplicate right that you do right here because it is just randomly selecting, attempting to um, make sure every exercise is different for you. So this brings up, a good example right here. I obviously don't want to do the same exercise twice. So you can actually change it right here and bring something uh, that you would like. So uh, you can search through the database. I know I want to do standing hammer curls, click on that. It's going to refresh my workout, have the same ones, but now instead of having a duplicate, I have two right here. Uh, it has a video in case you have no clue how to do a barbell incline, incline press. It's going to give you uh, techniques, suggestions, all that good stuff. Um, another feature I have is where you can log your exercise stats. Uh, this is very helpful when looking back to see how things went. So on my barbell incline press, you know, it is recommended that uh, with my app, just as a starting point, you're going to do three sets of 10 on everything. But, you know, if you do 100 pounds, maybe you went up to 110 pounds on the last one, and then you can leave comments about this. So when you are referring back to this workout later, you have those uh, numbers there, but uh, weight felt light. And then once you update that, it automatically populates for you. And you would go and do that throughout your entire workout. Or if you don't care for that type of information, you just have the workout there. Um, down at the bottom, you can finish your workout. And once you do that, it's going to populate another tile at the bottom. And then you'll also notice that today's date now has a green dot to say that you completed an exercise and it's going to be there for you. Uh, so workout summary, as you can see, it has the comments and weights that we did, weight felt light, went up on last set and so forth. Um, another cool feature that we have is if I remembered, you know, back on Monday the 1st, I had a really great workout that I enjoyed and I wanna do that again without potentially generating a brand new workout, you can go down to that tile below, go to that workout summary and say, oh yeah, this was the one that uh, I had a good time doing. And I want to do that again today. You can hit this repeat workout button and it's going to repopulate everything again with the videos, with your weights, with your comments. So now you can actually reference that while you're doing uh, your lifts. So, you know, on my decline cable flies, I made a comment that I felt a nice contraction, but should attempt to go up one pound next week. So I can do that. And then if I change my reps or sets, you can update that as well. And once you finish your workout again, you now have that as a brand new workout that you completed rather than riding over your previous workout that was from the first. Um, because as I said, every time you go to this generate new workout, it is going to be a brand new workout that randomly generates lifts based off of what your preference is and that you will not have the same workout twice more than likely. That's what I got. All right, awesome job, Percy. Let's kick it over to our next panelist, which is Jennifer. Yeah, this is really awesome and like definitely a, a response to a, a real world problem. Um, I know when I go to the gym, sometimes I, struggle with thinking about what to do or like trying to remember what I did in the past. Um, 
and obviously apps, apps can help with that. Um, for this project, what was your um, favorite feature to build out? Favorite feature? Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. I think it was all equally. It was nice to just see everything come together because as you mentioned, there are many people who have this issue and it's just like, I don't know what to do. So seeing this come together and seeing that it does help fix that problem is was satisfying. Yeah. Um, did you enjoy building out the front end more or the back end when you were working on it? You know, I get that question a lot and even outside of this project. And I think mm -hmm. the back end is always a little bit more fun for me. I enjoy databases and just, um, you know, especially when you're sending information to your front with a web request, you manipulate what you're sending and who's getting that information. So that's what I enjoy. Great. And uh, what would a version two of this look like? Any new features in, in mind for that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, version two, one of the things I'd like to incorporate is that it would have the ability to where it has the database of lifts and then you can choose. So that way, after you've used this app for a while, you know, rather than coming in here and saying, Hey, just give me three random chess exercises. You can tell them, Hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z today. Um, another thing that I would also like to work on is understanding the view calendar a little bit better. Um, I read through some documentation and some things were easier than others, but I'd like to be able to link where you can click on a day up top rather than scroll through all of your uh, workout tiles to get that summary and repeat. It could still have these down below where you can find them, but they would serve as the same function, just a little bit easier to access. Yeah, those are all great ideas. Um, thanks so much. And yeah, this, this looks wonderful. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, awesome job, Percy. Um, one of those apps where it's going to have a surprisingly complex backend, right? Where you're just seeing the polished result of like, here's some random workouts, but like in order to make this accurate, um, it takes a tremendous amount of work. Um, and, you know, Percy didn't really listen to me. I was like, well, Percy, you could just, you know, not make it accurate. You could just throw in some random workouts that don't make no sense that, you know, target the wrong muscles. And Percy's like, no, there's muscle groups, there's lifts, there's workouts, and it has to be accurate, Peter. And I'm like, all right, all right. So Percy spent a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of his time making sure that, that the back end and the data was was really accurate. And so this is, you know, uh, something that people could actually use, which is which is super cool. Um, all right. So great job, Percy. So we have our last but not least presenter, which is Vic. So Vic, if you want to take over the screen share uh, and get started when you are ready. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so the idea for my capstone came from online dating. I met my girlfriend on an online dating platform, but um, before I met her, I kind of went through like months of not getting any matches and just getting crickets. And I, was, I wasn't going out on dates. So I didn't really know what was going on with my profile. So then I asked one of my female friends, you know, to kind of like to take a look at my profile, check out my photos and see what she thought. And she told me, you know, that the, uh, the photos I was using weren't really representing or telling a great story of who I was as a person. So I was like, okay, uh, it'd be kind of cool if there was an app that gave you all that feedback uh, instantly. Um, so that's what I did. I built an app that uh, gives you feedback on your online dating profile. So on my, uh, on my app, you can, uh, you can create a user, you know, you can upload all your photos. Um, once you're logged in, and I, I made a fake profile for, for this app. Um, so once you're logged in, you kind of see uh, your uh, primary photo with a brief like bio description of like uh, who you are, uh, like where you're located at. And yeah, you have a short bio. So, you know, I use this photo as my primary. And, you know, I thought this was a great photo. I'm wearing sunglasses. I think it makes me look cool. My hair is styled, uh, you know, I, the background is blurred out. I think this is a great photo. I don't see anything wrong with it. But if I run an analysis, you know, it says that my mood appears to be angry and I'm only scoring 60%, which is not good. So I'd like to know why, why that is. So if I run the full analysis, uh, the AI takes in the photo and it spits out like parameters where I scored bad at. So it's, one of the things that is not good is uh, that I'm wearing sunglasses because sunglasses make you look like a creep. 
Also, I'm not smiling in a photo, which is not good. And apparently it also thinks that I look angry and not happy. So those are all, those are the four things I could improve on and like change about my photo to make me look better. So, so this was an AI rating. So I thought maybe this was just bad reading. So I wanted to uh, see what actual users think. So if you go to all of your photos, you can see uh, feedback from actual uh, raters. And you know, they're all, if you look at the, what they're saying, it kind of says that it's, it's the same theme. You know, they're all saying that you shouldn't be wearing sunglasses in your photos. It makes you look like you're hungover or you're hiding something. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's something I could improve on, you know, not wear sunglasses in my photos. Um, in my second photo, you know, it, you know, I just spent the whole day coding. I'm tired. So I'm just relaxing, you know, watching some Netflix. I'm showing people that I'm like a laid back person. You know, I thought this was an okay photo, whatever. Um, so the first, and then when you run the AI analysis, you know, it gives you a rating of 80%, which is all right. That's, that's a good photo. But the average score from Raiders is only 46.5%. And if you read some of the comments, it says, you know, that I look as a person that, uh, glass half empty energy so that's not good obviously this photo is like lacking confidence uh, i could probably like improve my posture and things like that uh, one of the raiders said just left a comment that says man which doesn't really give me much feedback uh, as to what i can do to improve it so i'm gonna give them a thumbs down um, for all the photos and all uh all the reviews you can give a rating to the raider whether you found a feedback useful or not um if you look at like my third photo, I thought this was a great photo. You know, this is uh, me in a social event drinking. I'm sitting next to uh, Taylor Swift dressed as a mermaid. So, you know, I have famous friends. It's, I think this is a funny, great photo. Um, but the uh, average Raider photo score is only 55%. And when I look at the comments, you know, they're saying that this is uh, looks like another college beer boost photo, which is which is not good. So I would say I wouldn't use that in my profile. Um, if you're looking at, if I look at like my fourth photo that I uploaded, the uh, average Raider score came out to be 95%. And if I run an AI analysis, it comes out to be a uh, hundred. So I'm like, all right, this is actually a good photo. This is something I'd wanna use on my dating profile to increase like my chances of getting matches and landing dates. Um, and then there's the last photo that I also added that just has like a picture of me and my dog. Um, another thing you can do on my website is you can see like, what is your best photo, which will give the, uh, the photo that got the highest rating from both the, uh, the users and the AI. Um, you can also check like which photos you should replace. And it's based on the, the rating that got the, uh, uh, based on the photos that got a rating lower than 80%. And you can kind of also get a general idea of what people think of your profile. And, you know, if you appear to be fun, authentic, trustworthy, attractive, or confident. Um, so what my website does, it uses an AI to give you like a quick analysis, but you're also getting actual feedback from uh, live raters to kind of see if they match up together and to see where you stand. Because sometimes the AI might be off a little bit, or it might match up with what the Raiders are saying. So, you know, like how to improve your profile to get more matches and, and potentially end up getting more dates. So that's what my app does. All right, awesome job, Vic. We'll take it over to Jay Wengro, who also happens to be an online dating expert from what I understand as well. Sure, and a college football expert. I'm, I'm an expert on many, many things. Vic, this is a really, Great app, really cool. Please tell me how it does the AI work. What are you using for that? Uh, it took me a lot of time to actually found, find an uh, image anal analysis software that like was free and also allowed to send me like multiple requests. So I'm using uh, this API called Sky uh, Biometry. And the way it works is um, when you upload an image to it, it uh, analyzes it and it spits out data. It has like a, um, a an array of hashes. And I'll say like, um, whether you're smiling or like if you're wearing glasses or sunglasses, if you seem upset, it even tells you like guesstimate age, what you appear to be, like how old you appear to be. Mm -hmm. um, 
so yeah, it takes it takes a lot of factors and it it spits out all that data. So then I'm just pulling that data and uh, printing it out on my website, and then I'm running a bunch of conditionals, whether the value appears to be true or false, whether it's a good or a bad thing. Got it. So like the but the comments of uh, sunglasses make you look like a creep. That's not coming from the API. That's like your own. Your app is taking that data and therefore making that comment. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Got it. That's really cool. Um. Yeah, it's really it's really amazing how it how it uh, and it seems to be relatively accurate for these pictures. So it does a pretty good job. Um. Cool. What um are you using Vue.js on the front end? Yeah, I did use Vue.js on the front end, and that took a lot of time just being able to pull all the data. Cause I, I ran into a lot of bugs and glitches where if I clicked on a photo, um, instead of like showing that specific photo, it show like all the photos. Or mm -hmm. if I, uh, if I ran the analysis, all the photos would get rearranged a, a whole bunch of random bugs that I had to deal with on the front end. Got it. Yeah. A lot more work behind the scenes. Uh, like you make it look simple with this polished app, but behind the scenes, there's definitely an incredible amount of work. Um, cool. What would what else would you add to this app in the future? For like version 2.0, uh, and this is something I looked into, but I couldn't quite finish. It would, uh, would be um, use like Tinder or Hinge or Bumble uh, OAuth, where the user can just pull up their online dating profiles and automatically upload all the information and all the photos to this website instead of having to like upload each photo, a photo individually. Got it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Although it makes sense to have this as like a testing ground. Like you want to check out these images before you ever post them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or like so, if, if it's not working out for you, you can use this right. as a feedback type of service. <clears throat> yeah. That makes sense. Um, awesome. Vic. This is really cool. Uh, I love it. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, awesome job, Vic. Um, although I would say the the AI seemed a little biased to me because when I tried to plug in my dating profile information, it uh, it uh, didn't give me a very good score. So I feel like uh, Vic had Vic had put some uh, kind of uh, some biases in there. I don't know, um, but maybe, maybe it just means I need to improve my online dating profile. We'll see. Um, all right, so I believe that was everybody uh, who presented their capstones. So I just wanted to say, you know, uh, congratulations again to everyone here. Um, it's a tremendous amount of work uh, that goes into these capstones and what you guys are seeing right now is just like the culmination of a whole bunch of learning. Like everybody who came into this class had no background with, you know, any kind of web development or even programming in general. So to see them make these types of apps that are, you know, both very visually impressive and also actually, you know, useful in real life is, um, is really amazing. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, extend, uh, you know, my, my heartfelt congratulations to everybody because I know it's not easy. Um, and uh, you guys make it seem almost effortless when you're presenting this stuff, but I know that it was a lot of blood, sweat and tears that, that, that go into uh, making something like this. Um, especially, you know, during the times that we're living in where there's so much other stuff going on, the fact that you guys are able to focus in and pull these amazing projects together is, is, is always impressive to see. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know, Jay or uh, anybody else wants to throw in some final words before we wrap up this uh, set of uh, presentations. Sure, just wanted to say congratulations to everyone. Um, your apps are all fantastic, every single one of them without exception. And the presentations were great too. Great too. Um, you know, it's, not just about the app, but it's how you presented it and demonstrate all the features and a lot of good narratives about what inspired you to build all of these apps. And uh, I really appreciated that. So congrats again to all of you. Uh, you did a fantastic job. All righty, y'all. So with that, we're going ahead and wrap up this uh, live presentation. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, seeing you guys continue all of your hard work into your uh, new software developer careers. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and call it a presentation.